It is my singular honor and privilege to be invited to this very important signing ceremony to deliver the keynote address and to welcome all of you, especially our brothers and sisters from Côte d'Ivoire. Please accept the warmest felicitations of His Excellency Nana Dodankwa Kufuadu, President of the Republic of Ghana. He appreciates the resilience, zeal, and commitment of members over the years for improved incomes for our farmers, which has led to this joint COCO initiative between our two countries. Ghana is committed to building closer relations with the government and people of Côte d'Ivoire, with whom we share close fraternal ties. We are pleased that the cooperation between our two countries contributes to advancing economic development in our respective countries, the most prominent and recent being the adoption of various sustainability initiatives which guarantee decent incomes for our cocoa farmers. Let me applaud our two countries for the bold and decisive initiative taken to further deepen our exemplary cooperation with the establishment of the cocoa initiative between Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana. Today we meet here to observe a key milestone following the establishment of the organization by signing its headquarters agreement. The Côte d'Ivoire-Ghana initiative will enable us to harmonize our efforts as we take our rightful place of influence as leaders in global cocoa bean supply. This would benefit the millions of our cocoa farmers, especially whose product is the key ingredient for the thriving chocolate market but who are deprived from a decent return due to unfavorable world market prices. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate Ghana's Minister for Food and Agriculture, Honorable Dr. Owusu Efriye Akutu, who has been elected the first chairman of the steering committee of the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Coco Initiative. Dr. Akutu's election marks an important step in further strengthening the cooperation that exists between the two leading global producers of cocoa beans in the world. The steering committee headed by Ghana's Food and Agriculture Minister serves as an advisory body made up of top level stakeholders and would be expected to provide guidance on critical issues by the executive body. Earlier this year, Côte d'Ivoire's Alex Arno Asanvo was appointed to be the first ever executive secretary of the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Coco Initiative. My congratulations to you, sir. Distinguished guest, I wish to recall that the, Ghana, the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Coco Initiative began with the Abidjan Declaration on the 26th of March 2018 where the presidents of Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire, their excellencies Nanado Dankwa Kufuado and Excellency Alassane Ouattara charged the Ghana Cocoa Board and Le Concierge du Café Cacao to commit to a process that will ensure that cocoa farmers in the two countries enjoy decent and remunerative income for improved standard of living. The events of June 11th and 12, 2019 at the Moven Peak Hotel Accra, Ghana, where representatives of trade houses, cocoa processors, and chocolatiers were brought together to brainstorm on a pricing mechanism which guarantees living income and shields cocoa farmers from the effects of continuous fall in cocoa prices on the world market further garnered support leading to its achievement of the living income differential, the LID. This joint unprecedented feat led to the achievement of the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Coco Initiative. The decision by the steering committee of the initiative to establish its secretariat in Ghana required agreement on some protocols between the government of Ghana on one side and the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Cocoa Initiative on the other side. By this charter, 
the Republic of Ghana guarantees absolute diplomatic privileges, support, and protection to the operations of the Secretariat of the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Cocoa Initiative in Ghana. The Charter, among other things, gives recognition and immunities to the Secretariat and further provides independence to its operations in the country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for more than a century, the cocoa sector has been the backbone of the economies of both countries, bringing in billions of dollars in foreign exchange and providing jobs directly and indirectly. The industry contributes significantly to gross domestic product, the GDP, and employs over 2 million people along the supply chain, remaining a major source of foreign exchange earnings for both countries. The world's two largest cocoa producers, Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana, have created a joint body to improve coordination in research, price setting, and the fight against child labor. The two countries which produce about 60% of the world's cocoa have coordinated on some of those issues before. But this new organization marks a formal step towards even more effective cooperation. The Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Cocoa Initiative will provide their cocoa industries internationally and defend their collective position in the global market. The organization will allow the two countries to formalize an agreement started three years ago whereby we both announced farm gate prices at the start of the growing season on October 1st, a measure aimed at reducing smuggling across our shared border. Ladies and gentlemen, among its many contributions, the cocoa sector supports infrastructure development in education and roads and highways. Most of the foreign exchange earnings from cocoa are retained in our countries, thereby boosting the respective countries' foreign exchange reserves. Last year, the two countries raised the guaranteed price we pay cocoa farmers to about $1.50 per kilogram for the 2019-2020 main crop harvest. We also introduced a minimum price floor to address a perceived imbalance between farmers' incomes and money made by big commodities traders. Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire have just taken decisive measures to protect our forests. Both countries have signed and approved their detailed action plans for environmentally friendly cocoa cultivation. Through this act, governments and companies involved in the cocoa production, supply and processing chain commit themselves to no longer convert any forest land for cocoa production and to eliminate illegal cocoa production in protected areas. The action plans focus on forest protection and restoration, sustainable cocoa production, farmers' livelihoods, community engagement, and social inclusion. The National Plan for Côte d'Ivoire is based on the country's strategy adopted in May 2018, with a focus on the adoption of the new forestry code. The creation of a National Forest Conservation and Rehabilitation Fund, the development and implementation of the National Cocoa Traceability System, and the implementation of pilot, pilot projects in five priority regions. For its part, Ghana's national plan builds on the REDD Plus program, which aims to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions from deforestation and improve carbon storage through sustainable forest management. Priority actions in this plan include intensifying landscape approaches to halt forest degradation in six intervention areas, which are all hotspots. In addition, cocoa yields have been improved through the adoption of smart climate practices and supply chain mapping has been strengthened. Realizing the unique position of the two countries in the global cocoa fraternity, 
where both countries command about 65% of the cocoa stock, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana have capitalized on this niche and pursued a journey towards the institution of a pricing mechanism that reduces cocoa farmers' vulnerability to price volatility on the world market. Ghana and cocoa, Cote d'Ivoire's new living income differential, LID, which requires buyers of cocoa beans from the two countries to pay an extra $400 per ton of cocoa bought is therefore a bold move by both governments to make a fundamental change to the structure of global cocoa marketing and to ensure that rural producers of the crop receive a living income. As government, we pledge our unflinching support and cooperation to help initiate, achieve its primary objective. It is our ultimate aim that in the end, the cocoa farmers' income level will enable them and their families enjoy decent living standards. I thank you for your attention. Long live Ghana. Long live Côte d'Ivoire.